Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Uh, last time uh, we discussed the uh, applications and usage of uh, mechanical vibration. That's why we uh, study mechanical vibrations. What are its application in our daily life and what are its applications in industry? Today uh, we would be discussing the causes of vibrations in machines and uh, machine components and mechanical components. Although there are few useful uh, applications of uh, mechanical vibrations such as a vibrator in a mobile phone or and a vibrator in the shaving machine uh, and also in a weak pressure there are vibrators which are used for sorting the wheat and also there are conveyor belts which vibrates uh, and do sorting of uh, products. But having said that, there in machines we don't want vibrations. We want such machines, such mechanical components which do not vibrate at all because the vibration could um, harm the machine components, it would damage the uh, machine with the passage of time and also it could affect the machining uh, processes. For example, if a lathe machine is vibrating, so is it possible to have a good product on that? Is it possible to do the <coughs> machining that is for example turning, plane turning, and other processes and drilling with that so the accuracy would be not there. So we don't want uh, vibrations in the machine components. It would harm its uh, processing, it would also damage the mechanical components or in the worst case it would damage the whole machines so the maintenance cost would be enormous in that case. So in the today's slides we would be discussing what actually causes vibrations in machines and mechanical components. So worn machine components exert a repeating force on machines because of the rubbing of even one surfaces they produce uh, repeating forces and those repeating forces actually produce vibration. For example uh, here you see a uh, roller bearing or ball bearing and if the balls, these rollers or balls are worn out then the bearing would vibrate. In turn the shaft and the whole uh, spandle of the machine would vibrate. Here you see uh, another example of kids and these are the uh, teeth of kids. If because of any reasons, with the passage of time, if uh, one or two teeth are worn out, then it would produce a vibration in your uh, machine. Also, here you see um, the pulleys and belt, and this is the timing belt. And if the teeth are worn out, then there would be vibration in the belt, vibration in the pulleys and the shafts or overall there would be vibration in the machine. So worn out parts. When the machine is new, it's each and every component is new. So the vibration is less. And with the passage of time as wear and tear occurs in the machine, uh, then what happens? The level of vibration, the amplitude of vibration uh, increases with the passage of time. And then it would reach such a stage, stage or state where we would decide that now it's the time to uh, shut down the machine or operate us and do the maintenance. And what could be the causes? For example, we could slow down the process of wear, wear and tear in the machine components um, by proper uh, lubrication, by proper uh, mounting, by proper uh, <coughs> operation, uh, but still uh, with the passage of time, we as we enter would occur, then 
the level of vibration would increase. Improper mountings, poor lubrication, manufacturing defects, and overloading could cause uh, wear and tear in the uh, machine components at high rate, at fast rate, and the machine would start vibration, vibrating quickly if these are the effects. Also, a skilled labor operation. Uh, we, uh, if you are operating a machine with a skilled labor, then the damage or the wear would be slow. However, if you are actually operating the machine inadequately, then in that case, the wear and tear would be more. Improper driven machines component also exert repeating force on the machine because of inter, in, intermittent power supply. Examples include pumps receiving air impulses. For example, if this is a pump, air pump, and it is actually receiving air supply impulses, then uh, actually um, there would be repeating forces on the rotor of the pump and the pump would vibrate uh, severely. In case if it is a turbine and uh, if it is air turbine or steam turbine and the fluid which we are supplying it is in pulses then the operation is actually uh, the, there would be repeating forces on the uh, rotor and on the blades because of which the rotor would vibrate and the whole equipment would vibrate, the whole machine would vibrate. Internal combustion engine, you know, on the other hand, if we uh, look at the internal combustion engine and if there is uh, misfiring in the cylinder, for example, normally in automobile there are more than uh, one cylinders, two cylinders, three cylinders, four cylinders, and normally if there is misfiring in one of the cylinders because of any reason, because of uh, uh, fuel stoppages or because of uh, uh, lug uh, uh, damage. So if there is misfiring in uh, one of the cylinders, then your automobile uh, would uh, severely uh, vibrate. Other normally uh, the uh, cause of vibration in electrical generator and in uh, electrical DC motors uh, intermittent uh, bush content contact. Normally we are using the carbon bushes which are actually uh, bringing the current uh, into the uh, yeah. machine or taking out the current out of the machine in case of electrical generator. In that case if there is intermittent uh, brush content contact or uh, bush contact then in that case uh, actually the load, the load on the machine would vary. So in that case the machine that is the electrical motor or electrical generator it would severely vibrate. In machines uh, normally uh, the major uh, cause uh, in most of the machines is actually uh, imbalancing. Imbalanced machined components contain heavy spots which when rotated exert a repeating force on the machine. Imbalance is often caused by machine machining errors during manufacturing uh, non-uniform material uh, density. If you are making the machine components with a defective material which have blow holes and the uh, material density is not uh, same uh, throughout the component then it would exert an uneven force if it is rotated. Variation in bolt sizes. Normally we use nut and bolts to assemble the components. If we are using uh, different sizes, nut and bolts, which have different forces, which have different weights, then it would actually cause unnecessary uh, unbalanced forces when uh, those machine components are rotated. Air cavities in the cast uh, parts, if we are casting the material and making the components but there are air cavities inside the material 
then it means that there is unbalanced force missing uh, balance weights normally uh, when we have uh, machine components and they are uh, suppose they are supposed to be rotated so normally initially when they are manufactured we uh, properly balance them with the help of the balancing weights if in case of any reason if the balancing weights are actually uh, missing then in that case again uh, the machine component would become imbalanced incorrect balancing when we are mounting the machines uh, components we are looking uh, at the uh, correct balancing of the rotor over the stator if that is not the case the machine would vibrate when it is operated and even electrical uh, motor windings in electrical uh, electrical motors or generators if the winding is not proper if it is uneven the number of turns on some sides are uh, different than the other then if you operate the uh, those electrical generators and those electrical motors then what would happen they would severe the vibration and broken deformed uh, or corroded or dirty fin blades etc could be the causes of the severe vibrations due to unbalance for example here you see uh, this is the rotor and this is the shaft the shaft is not passed to the center of the rotor the shaft is eccentric so what would happen what we are expecting so when uh, this rotor is rotated so on this side the weight is more so there would be an unbalanced force and that unbalanced force would produce severe vibration as the rotor is rotated similarly here because of any uh, any uh, any reason um, you could see that the shaft is bended one uh, maybe because of manufacturing part or it has bended uh, during the machining processes or during the assembling processes so uh, any any could be the cause but if the shaft is bended and if we uh, operate this uh, machine the rotor is rotated then the whole assembly would severely vibrate here if this is a fan uh, uh, rotor uh, you could see a number of blades on this blade there is some dirt accumulated on the blade so this blade weight is more than the other one other blades so there is an unbalanced force on the rotor uh, so when it is rotated so what would happen uh, the whole assembly would vibrate severely similarly if with the passage of time uh, one of the blade is corroded uh, then the this the weight of this blade is less than the other two so again the uh, rotor is unbalanced and because of this unbalanced uh, rotor there would be severe vibration so unbalanced machines part unbalanced machine part especially if there is a rotor in the machine and it is not balanced uh, uh, then it would produce uh, severe vibration in your uh, machine components misalignment is another reason uh, which could produce severe vibration when your machine is operated for example here you see that this is the electrical motor and this is actually let's say the driven machinery this is the shaft of the uh, driven machinery uh, and you could see that uh, there there is misalignment if they are coupled if these two shafts are coupled in this manner this is a misalignment the shaft this shaft and this shaft should be the axis of these two shafts should be in same line these should be coincident however you could see that they are offset from each other so we call this misalignment and this is an example of uh, parallel misalignment and if we assemble these two machines in uh, such misalignment case and then we operate the machine then what would happen uh, there would be severe vibration here you see that these two shafts Uh, which uh, are uh, actually misaligned uh, through some angle so this type of misalignment is known as angular uh, misalignment and this angular misalignment uh, if these two machines are coupled with the coupling in such a manner then they would produce vibration so misaligned machine components create bending moments which when rotated exert a repeated 
uh, force on the machine. Misalignment is often caused by inaccurate assembly, uneven floors, thermal expansion could also be the reason of misalignment, distortion due to um, fastening uh, torque and improper mounting of coupling. So normally couplings are used to couple these two shafts. So these are some reasons which could produce misalignment in your uh, machines and uh, that could lead to severe mechanical vibration in your machine. Other causes looseness. Looseness can cause vibration in both rotating and non-rotating machines. Looseness is often due to excessive bearing clearances. Loose mounting, bolts, uh, mismatched parts, corrosion and crack uh, structures uh, could actually lead to uh, looseness and uh, vibration. Here you see that we have a rotor. This is the shaft of the rotor and this is actually the symbol which we are using uh, for the uh, bearing. So this is a bearing which is actually supporting the shaft. So one bearing is here on this side. However, the other bearing is on this side to support the shaft. If the clearance between the shaft and the hole of the bearing is uh, more uh, and uh, the, shaft, the shaft is loosely uh, mounted inside the uh, bearing hole, then when the uh, machine is operated, when the rotor rotates, it would wobble. It would wobble, it would vibrate, and it would uh, severely uh, <coughs> vibrate the whole machine. Also here you see um, an electrical motor or electrical generator, a machine which is actually uh, mounted on the ground, but normally the bolts are not uh, tight enough to keep the machine um, properly mounted or tightly mounted on the ground. So if you have a loose bolts, um, uh, as you see, so in that case, actually when we operate the machine, the machine would vibrate. So looseness could also cause uh, vibration inside the machine. So initially, uh, uh, Vibration in machines, we do not, do not want vibration. We have to avoid the vibration because it could uh, cause a number of uh, things which, which, which uh, we don't want. For example, vibration could, uh, it would harm your processing. The process, it would harm your product. Similarly, <laughs> as the vibration takes place, the damage of mechanical components would exaggerate, it would become more as the machine vibrates. So the machine would fail quickly, it would need more maintenance if the machine is uh, vibrating. So the parts would uh, wear uh, quickly, so we would need more maintenance. So uh, first of all we don't want vibrations inside the machines. We want zero vibrations. but Actually, uh, it is uh, practically impossible to have such machines in which vibration is almost zero. In the beginning when the machines are new and everything is proper, that is the machines are uh, properly balanced and uh, there is no looseness and the operation is uh, proper and the operator is skilled Then actually in the beginning uh, the levels of vibration would be minimum. It would be minimum, but there would be vibration. There is no machines in the whole world where somebody claims that uh, that machine, uh, in that machine there are moving parts and its vibration level or amplitude is zero. In the beginning when the machine is new, the vibration levels would be very, very small, minimum. But as with the passage of time, the wear and tear uh, would occur in the machine parts then with the passage of time the level of vibration would increase. However, with uh, proper lubrication, proper operation and proper maintenance, we could reduce the wear and tear inside the machine and the level of vibrations inside the machine. But once 
everything is actually in poor shape, then the level of vibration would reach such a level where we have to shut down the machine and we have to, to do or perform the proper maintenance on the machine. Otherwise, if you are not shutting down the machine, we are not doing the proper maintenance and the vibration becomes severe, then actually uh, there would be a catastrophic failure for the machine and there would be a severe damage and uh, then it would be not possible to actually do the proper maintenance of the machine then in that case there would be uh, this that would be there it would be more feasible to buy a new machine rather than making that machine because then the <coughs> maintenance the cost of maintenance on that machine would be too much so <coughs> For example, as you see that in the beginning when you we have new automobile, when we start the engine, the noise level and also the vibration level is minimal. But as with the passage of time, then when wear and tear takes place in automobile inside the engine, then the level of vibration increases and also the sound level increases. So the same actually happens in all of the machines. Now <coughs> We will discuss uh, some uh, review uh, slides about the vibrations. As in the last lecture, we discussed that vibration is actually true and fro motion, which repeat itself. So any motion that repeat itself after an equal interval of time, then it is known as vibration. To and fro motion, which repeat itself after an equal interval of time, then it is uh, vibration. So, whenever there is motion in the mechanical uh, components, then there would be vibration. There would be vibration. So, how to mathematically express uh, those mechanical vibrations? Actually, we would be using the knowledge of uh, physics. We would be using the knowledge of mathematics. <coughs> and we would be using the knowledge of uh, other engineering uh, subjects, for example, statics, dynamics, etc., to actually model uh, the uh, systems, mechanical systems, and then actually study its behavior in the vibration. When they are subjected to the vibration, what would be its response? So, any vibratory system, when we are modeling the vibratory system, so first we have to look into its physics. Uh, <coughs> what is inside the uh, system. So, vibratory systems are normally uh, when we uh, do the modeling, we have to look into the system. So, all mechanical uh, systems would have elasticity. It would have elasticity. They, they are elastic. Elastic means when you apply a force, then the formation would occur in them. So, they are not rigid. Rigid is actually the body when you apply even infinity force then the deformation would be zero. But in reality, uh, this is not the case. When you subject the material to external loading, then deformation occurs. There is elasticity in the material. So all machine components would have elasticity. All machines would have elasticity. So uh, we have to keep in our mind that the mechanical components would have elasticity. So, we have to model for elasticity. Similarly, the machine components will have mass. That is the reality. So, we have to keep in our mind that machine components would have mass or inertia. Damper. Damping. There would be damping in the machine components or in the machine. By damping, we mean energy losses when there are machine components and they are moving relative to each other because of friction there would be energy dissipation which would be going out of the machine so that damping that energy loss the energy which is going out of the machine in terms of friction or other reason which we which we, we would be studying we model that energy loss which is going out of the machine as damping. So, simply saying that there would be a damper part in the modeling of the machine. 
vibration actually involves transfer of potential energy to kinetic energy and kinetic energy to potential energy so when the system vibrates when the system vibrates so what is happening during vibration the potential energy changes into kinetic energy and kinetic energy changes into potential energy kinetic energy is the form of energy which is because of the motion of the object so when the machine component is moving then it would have a uh, velocity it would have kinetic energy potential energy potential energy when the energy is stored in the machine component because of deformation because of deformation strain would occur and because of that strain energy would be stored inside the material and as energy is stored in the material we classify that energy as potential energy so during vibration what would happen the kinetic energy would change into potential energy and then potential energy would change into kinetic energy so this would be more clear when we would uh, uh, discuss these in the coming slides classification of uh, vibration free vibration force vibration normally uh, the system a system is left to vibrate on its own after an initial disturbance and no external force acts on the system then that kind of vibration is known as free vibration we have a system we have initial disturb the system with some external force and the system starts vibra vibration and during that vibration that external force which actually causes the vibration that is not present it is not applying on the system the disturbance which has producing which is actually producing the vibration it is not actually present during the whole vibration of the system that kind of vibration is known as free vibration or natural vibration so for example we have a system we have just kicked the system and the system start vibration and we are just looking at the system we are not applying the force of excitation or the disturbance again during the whole vibration of the system an impact force actually just started the vibration and then actually the system is vibrating under the influence of no external force such type of vibration is known as free vibration or natural vibration for example if we have a simple pendulum i move the <coughs> uh, suspended mass which is actually connected to string and then i'm i have i have disturbed the system then i have released the mass and then what would happen the mass would oscillate it would oscillate about the mean position during all of this oscillation the x disturbance which was actually moving the uh, suspended mass and increasing its potential energy that is not there so such type of uh, vibration is known as free or natural vibration force vibration a system that is subjected to repeating external force for example oscillation arises from diesel engine the in case of force vibration the disturbance or the force of excitation which is actually causing the vibration in the machine component that is always there and it is repeating it is repeating itself during the whole vibration during the vibration of the system the force of excitation or the disturbance is continuously exerting on the system so such type of vibration is known as forced vibration and the example is that the diesel engine is vibrating and the force of excitation is coming from where force of excitation is coming from the cylinders the force is generating there the combustion is taking place and that combustion is actually pushing the piston inside the cylinder and it is producing a uh, external force and that external force is actually producing the vibration in the whole engine the vibration in the whole uh, body of the automobile such type of vibration is force vibration resonance 
uh, normally you may have heard about the uh, resonance. A uh, resonance occurs when the frequency of external force coincides with one of the natural frequencies of the system. In reality, we would have a system, and uh, that system is actually composed of infinite number of degrees of uh, freedom, meaning that it would have infinite number of natural frequencies. In reality, all systems would have infinite number of uh, natural frequencies. And normally, if we have a force of ex uh, if we have an external force, and when the frequency of external force matches, it coincides with one of the natural frequency of the system, then what would happen, the amplitude of vibration would become maximum. The vibration would become severe. And this phenomena is known as resonance. So normally resonance occurs when actually the uh, frequency of external force force of excitation coincides with one of the natural frequency of the system. Other uh, types of uh, vibration, we classify them as undamped vibration and damped vibration. Normally, as we discussed that in normally in mechanical systems, uh, there would be losses. There would be energy loss. There would be mechanical energy losses. For example, there would be friction between the uh, moving and stationary parts and because of that friction heat would be generated heat is energy that energy is coming from somewhere so in reality that energy would be coming from the system so there would be energy dissipation out of the system energy dissipation of out of the system we model that energy losses as damping as damping in the system so if there is minimal or no energy losses there is no energy losses in the system then during vibration uh, there is no energy losses we termed that vibration as undamped vibration so when no energy is lost or dissipated in friction or other resistance during oscillations we call that vibration as undamped uh, vibration in reality in reality there would be friction, there would be other resistances due to which there would be energy loss out of the system. So actually we would uh, not have, if we don't have even a single system where there is zero energy loss during vibration, there would be energy loss. But in some cases, the energy loss is very, very small. And it is so small that we could ignore it. So for the sake of simplicity, we ignore the energy losses. And we say that there is no damping in the system. And we will model that vibration as undamped vibrations. But remember that in reality, all vibrations are damped vibrations. Because in reality, there would be energy losses in the system during vibration in, because of the friction and other resistances. So, <coughs> damped vibration. When any energy is lost or dissipated in friction or other resistance during oscillations. So all real vibrations are damped vibration. Undamped vibration is an unreal vibration or it is a scenario where the uh, energy losses are very very small in the system and if we consider if even we consider the energy losses it would have no effect on the analysis of the system. So in that case for the sake of simplicity we ignore the uh, energy losses or damping in the system. We model the vibration as undamped vibration. Linear vibration. Normally, as we discussed, that any vibratory system would have three components. It would have elasticity, which we would model as spring. It would have mass, which we model at, as inertia or mass. It would have uh, energy losses, which would we, we, which we would be modeling as a uh, damper. If all these three basic components of the vibratory system, uh, that is spring, mass, and damper, uh, behaves linearly, then the mechanical vibration is termed as linear vibration. If all of these, the behavior of these three mechanical components 
is linear during vibration so we would model that vibration as linear vibration if any one of these three mechanical components that is spring mass or damper they behave non linearly non linearly then in that case the vibration would be non linear vibration and we have to model that uh, vibration as a non linear vibration uh other of uh, uh, forms of vibration deterministic vibration and non deterministic or random vibration deterministic vibration if the value or magnitude of the excitation that is force or motion acting on a vibratory system is known at any given time so that type of vibration is known as deterministic vibration <coughs> sinusoidal vibration we have a sine wave if the vibration is sinusoidal then uh, if you plot it we would have a sine wave we would have a sine wave uh, that is the case for um, deterministic vibration because we know exactly what at what time what would be the amplitude at what time what would be the level of uh, vibration at what time we were we would have crisp and we would have trough so that type of vibration sinusoidal vibration or periodic vibration is actually deterministic vibration the value or the magnitude of the vibration could be determined at any time interval at any time interval if we have a sine wave at any time interval let's say at time 0 what is the amplitude at time time is equal to 4 seconds what is the amplitude of vibration at time is equal to one minute what would be the level of vibration we could very easily determine that so we could very easily determine that experimentally and also theoretically or from the plot of the uh, actual vibration so such type of vibration is known as deterministic vibration on the other hand if the vibration is random if the uh level of vibration that is amplitude is changing with time and also the frequency is changing with time vibration would have two uh parameters one is the frequency and the other is the level of vibration that is the amplitude if if these are for example if the vibration has a constant amplitude and a constant frequency then it would be deterministic uh, vibration but if the frequency is a random number and also the amplitude is a random number it is changing with the phases of time during the vibration then such type of vibration is known as random vibration or non deterministic vibration when the value of excitation at a given time cannot be predicted so normally when the vibration is random or non deterministic so we cannot tell about the uh, amplitude of vibration and frequency of vibration at any given interval of time for example here you see an example an example of deterministic and uh, random uh, vibration or excitation so for example here you see that this is a force and this is the time and you could see a proper uh, spectrum uh it's a per periodic excitation is a periodic excitation because it is repeating itself after a certain period of time so for example you could see that this is the time period the time taken to complete one vibration is time period so it has a constant time period meaning that and the inverse of time period is frequency frequency is the number of cycles completed in 1 second completed in 1 second so it has a constant uh, frequency constant uh, time period and an amplitude is also uh, constant uh, on positive side and also on the negative side so this is a periodic uh, excitation so this is a deterministic um uh, uh, force of excitation or if it, it this is the plot of vibration 
so that vibration would be deterministic vibration because we could determine the level of excitation or level of vibration at any time for example at this time this is the amplitude of vibration at time is equal to this this would be the level of uh, vibration or uh, amplitude of the uh, force this is the spectrum of a random force of excitation or a random uh, vibration so you could see that the amplitude is changing with the passage of time and also the frequency it doesn't have a constant frequency or time period so such type of vibration is known as random vibration so we cannot predict the amplitude we cannot predict the frequency in this case in this case we could predict the uh, frequency and uh, amplitude at any given time however it is not the case here so this type of vibration is known as uh, random vibration this type of vibration is known as periodic and deterministic vibration